good to be back welcome back to my channel my name is satson in today's video we're going to do a continuation of a laravel crowd for beginners so in our previous tutorial we looked at how we can create models in our laravel application so this is our laravel mvc architecture we can see we have a route we have a view we have a controller we have a model and we have a database already we have created a database and tables in our database and we also did model right which is the interaction with our database today we want to look at what a controller is and so the best place to find that information is inside your documentation so i'll search for controllers up here so this one controllers so on the basics click on that basics there'll be a drop down and you see controllers right here so let's try and define what a controller is before we start creating controllers in our own application so it says here instead of defining all your request handling logic as closures in your route files you may wish to organize this behavior using controller classes so let's look at our route file our route file is found inside routes if you open routes you go to web.php which is the one that i have open right here we are defining our logic right here this function and then function right here these are anonymous functions they are called closures in php this function fires each time we visit this route here we can remove this logic from this file right here so you want to separate concerns you want to be able to have each file handle only one thing to quickly generate a new controller you may run the make controller command it's an artisan command and you can see here it says php artisan make controller and then the name of the controller that you're trying to generate i need you to understand that in your application you have a number of entities that you're going to be dealing with you can see right here we have a product model we have a user model these are separate entities and so you want to be able to interact with these entities separately and so you're going to create a controller for each and every one of these entities and so we can have a user controller we can have a product controller so naming controllers we name them based on the entity that we're trying to control so in our instance we have two models we have our user model we also have our product model but for now we're dealing with our user model so we can name that controller user controller so let's see how we can create that controller and php artisan make colon controller user capital letter u capital letter c and then controller like that and so if i run this command you're supposed to see a new file here in our http controllers folder right here so let me run that command and see what happens you can see a new file has been generated up here user controller so we can open that controller and see what is inside that controller so you can see it says it's a class user controller which extends the controller class and so how do we then use this controller we can then remove the logic this and this so i can remove this right here all the way cut that from there and then place it inside here this controller right here and then paste this so we need to name this function right here it's no longer an anonymous function it's going to be a public function which means it's going to be accessible outside of this class since we are creating users we can name it create right here so you can give this whatever name you want but there's a convention that is used in php and it returns a view the only difference is now we are not defining it as a closure here as an anonymous function we are defining it in a separate file and so how do we use it here for us to use it here we also have to consult with our documentation this is how we use it we pass in an array which contains two arguments the name of the class the other one is the name of the function we pass in an array is an argument here it's a second argument to this get method right here we pass in the name of the class so the class is called user controller right here so i can control c copy that and then i can paste it right here and then we have to say colon colon class right here and then we put a comma quotation you have to put that in quotation marks and then you say the function is create okay with this done we have successfully created a controller and so let's take a look at this let me save this file and also save this but before i run this we need to import this class right here so to import that you can just go to the namespace this is the namespace of the class copy this thing and we get back here and down here we can say use paste that and then backward slash and then the name of the class so it's it's called user controller 
just like that and we are good we're supposed to see no changes in our application so if i'm to go back refresh my page you can see nothing has changed we are still rendering the form on our web page we also have to remove this here we are using this route to store our users in our database so we can name this function store so i'm going to cut this right here let me cut that and then put it in our user controller. Of course, it's a different function. We'll paste this. We are public so that it's accessible outside of this class and we give it a name right here so that we reference it inside our route file. Store users, create users form right here. So yeah, you might want to put comments uh, so that it becomes easy. Uh, when you come back to this logic later on, you, you don't get confused. So if I'm to save this and go back inside here, we're doing the same thing. We're passing in a second argument, which is an array, which has a user controller and colon colon, which is a class. And also the name of that function, which is store, just like this. So you can see right here, we have our function, which is called store, and that's what we were passing inside here. All right, so with this, I can save this, and I can create a new user now. So let's try and, and create a new user. So I'm going to go into our application, I'm going to refresh, and let's say Peter right here, and I'm going to say Peter at Gmail. And that's a new user, Peter at Gmail, and then I'm going to and then i'm going to submit this if i submit that oh let me see what error do we have you can see oh okay we forgot this user right here you can see it says user inside our store we do not import that let me go and fix that we are using this user right here but we did not import it anyway here let me go to my web.php this user we're supposed to remove it from here because we're no longer using it here we are now using it in here let me paste that let me save that and, and try again let me save this as well and go back here and let's go and submit again or we'll submit that you can see we have a new user indeed right here so if i'm to go to my database and refresh that you can see down here we have a new user called peter this seems to be working and so basically this is how a controller works this route here this is the logic and for this route here this is the logic but all of these routes they have one thing in common they are using the same controller which is the user controller because they are performing our crowd operations the same entity which is our user and so we can also have the product controller which are routes that are going to handle the crowd operations on the product this becomes cleaner and and easier to work with. In our next tutorial, we're going to look at how we can read, update, and delete information from our database. I hope this has been helpful. If you find this video helpful, you can consider subscribing to the channel and hit that like button, leave a comment, and hope to see you in my next tutorial. For now, I'm out. Cheers.